Okay, so we want to make a simulation tool holder, and this is a live milling tool holder. So I just opened this up. This was a file that I downloaded from a uh, database from uh, the Velocity guys. So this sits at the face of the turret, this one here. And obviously this is gonna slide into the bore. So the way that these are supposed to be aligned or oriented is that uh, this face should be normal to the turret and that direction is defined by this blue arrow here. So uh, what we need to do is rotate this 90 degrees and we can do this a couple of different ways. So looking at at the uh, XYZ axis here, uh, what we can do is rotate this model about the X axis, the red, by 90 degrees. So I can right click, select all, right click again, and then come to copy and select rotate, move positive 90 degrees, and I'm gonna uncheck using the origin and select my x-axis. So now we're looking at this and now the model is oriented correctly in terms of the way that this face would sit up against the face of the turret. However, there's other ways that we can do this. I'm gonna go ahead and just undo that and bring the model back to the way it originally came in. Another way that we can do it is select this top face and we can pick <clears throat> align Z and when I select align Z that's going to automatically take that face and make it normal to the Z axis so we can see that that achieved the same thing uh, with a little bit less brain power also uh, because of the way that this came in and you know I don't know if these guys that model this up where they really put this. Sometimes they can be off slightly where they look like they're correct. So if we zoom into this, it looks like that axis is going right down the center there. But let's say we wanted to just verify that. We can pick one of these outside circular or cylindrical uh, faces and I could do an align Z again. And that is just gonna kinda make sure that this is centered about this axis right here. And now we can see that our live tool solid model is oriented the way that we would want it to be. So one last thing, the, the tool is here, this little block. The, the red X axis points toward the main spindle. So currently, this tool holder by default inside of Esprit, when you, when you load it, it's going to appear in this orientation with the tool facing the main spindle. So if you wanted to do uh, like a drilling operation on the face of your part or you know something on the face, this is the correct orientation. In Esprit, after we've loaded it in, you can rotate this 180 or we can take the model and rotate it now to face the sub if I believe that I would be always using this holder to face the other way. But uh, we're gonna leave it the way that it is now. I'm not a big fan of some of these colors, the green, the yellow, the red, the purple. So what I'm gonna do is just right click and select all. And in my properties under home, the home tab, this last icon here, show hide, if I click the arrow, you'll see that we have uh, the properties here. You can alt enter on the keyboard or check or uncheck the properties window there. But once I've selected everything, it'll common properties will appear here and I'm just gonna go ahead and select a light gray and that's gonna set some of these uh, solid values uh, to a different color. Additionally, I'm gonna just kinda uh, make it look a little bit nicer by changing some of the colors. Uh, since this is a Velocity product, I am going to use blue for that. 
just to make it look like an Okuma branded thing. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this, which is my coolant line. Uh, I'm gonna make that kind of a brassy colored coolant line there and maybe uh, darken up the collet nut and uh, we'll just come here and maybe make it a little bit darker of a, uh, of a gray. And that looks pretty good. You know, if you want to add some additional colors or something like that, you know, you could select multiple solid bodies by holding the control key, grabbing them all, and then changing the color of multiple bodies that way. So maybe on the back here, you know, I'll make this, uh, I'll make this blue, just like I did for that other one. So that looks pretty cool. Okay. So now we want to go ahead and define, so when we load this in, it's gonna appear on the turret station based on this point here. But where does the tool appear? We want it to appear here in the center of this collet and we want the tool base to start flush with this face and, and the tool would project outward the overhang or stick out would project outward from that face. So to do this, uh, we could do it a couple of different ways. Um, uh, we could come here and say work plane from geometry and I can select this face and we can see that we get a work plane there. And what we really want is the blue to be pointing into the holder. So we could come here and say rotate, uh, I'm gonna say down here, Rotate about U, just 180, 0, 0, and it goes ahead and flips that. Um, we could do this other ways too. I'm just going to come back here, double click on XYZ, bring my UVW back up here and show you a different method. Um, so I want the blue to be pointed this way. So what I could do is, is use the rotate now and just rotate about the green and say 0 minus 90 0 and then I can translate using the snap mode because my orientation is correct now I just need to position it at the center and even with that face so you could see that I've got a little circle next to my cursor and then the green highlight is on that face when I digitize it puts my UVW axis right there so you could use there's a couple other methods to use as well. Those are the two more common ones that I find myself using. Over here, we're going to go ahead and define this as a tool spindle axis. So we'll make a new work plane here, call it TSA, tool spindle axis, underscore one. Say enter. And now that is saved. Uh, so we're ready to go. This looks good. One thing I might want to do because you know, just to save on, on file space and computer crunching. So some of this stuff we don't need. I mean, you know, there's no reason to have a bunch of extra solid models in these holders that are internal components and stuff. So we can go in and select some of this stuff and I see that this model, you know, highlighting it, I don't see anything where it would be in the simulation. So I'm gonna hit delete. Then I'll zoom in a little bit more. I'll grab this guy. Obviously that one looks like it could be deleted. All this stuff is gonna be up in the turret. So I don't need to, you know, see any of that stuff or have it as part of the, uh, the model itself. So looks like a few extra solids there that I was able to get rid of. And at this point, um, we're probably pretty good. It might save a, a couple hundred K, but when you have 12 or 20 of these loaded on your turret, you know, that could add up to, you know, 10 megabytes or something like that, depending on, on how much uh, uh, complexity is in the solid models. So we're ready to go ahead and save this out as a simulation solid. So we'll just come here to file. We're gonna say save as, and I'm gonna select holder file. And here I'm going to go ahead and go to my data folder, holders, come down to velocity, and this is an Okuma LB 3000 holder, so I will just set it in that folder and say save, 
and we are done. Okay, so here we have our Okuma machine, and we want to just load this in to check it out, see how well it works. So what I'm going to do is just, uh, you know, you could drag this, this slide bar up and down to very quickly turn on or off different machine components. So, or you can, you can actually turn them into nice, clear, um, you know, if you want to have them there, but kind of have them as a little outline, but you can still see through them, uh, you can do it this way as well. Uh, additionally, you can just hit the button. And so that way, if I want to just turn something off up here, uh, that's the main spindle. But if I want to turn off the, uh, the turret, but not the machine, not the, the sub-spindle assembly, I can just click that button as well. But uh, let's just go with this right now. So we've got an open spot here at Station 9. I'm going to right-click, say Add Adaptive Item. We're going to come to the speeder that we just made and load that up. So when it comes in, it uh, appears on the station. And if you recall uh, where we wanted the XYZ axis to be to interface with the turret, that's where it's supposed to be. So the orientation is facing the main spindle. The tool is facing the main spindle. Uh, as I was mentioning before when we were creating this, here's where, you know, you could just type in 180 here and it will flip it around. Um, not sure if uh, this is designed to be used in both directions. Um, so, it doesn't look like it. I'm going to say zero. So here we go. Uh, we've got our holder placed in the machine and it is all in the correct orientation. I'll say OK. And then we can come over here, right click, and say add a milling tool. And I'll just take the default on whatever tool I made last, which looks like this thing's got a, a uh, <clears throat> shank diameter a little bit larger than the tool. We'll set that back to the tool diameter. And there we go. Uh, we've got a tool in there ready to use for machining. So depending on what you're uh, wanting to do, so let's go ahead and turn some of this stuff off again. Looking at my turret here, you know, here we have one with four different uh, live spindles. You know, we've got a couple cross attachments. We've got an offset and some turning tools as I go through and make some velocity products and swap some of these out. Uh, you can build your tool assemblies and save them out and use them on your next job.